This is the man from Modesto. The devil is a liar, and he has many tactics to use some of his uh, well-developed psychological skills to ruin your life, take away your peace, and to injure people around you. So, one way that he does this is by sending false dreams. Now, the devils are not afraid to employ a long con. Now, they already own the humanists and the atheists and others, but against the Christians, they will work together in teams, they will attack a whole church in concert, and they rely on the fact that churches don't help one another to employ this effectively. Every now and then you'll hear about a whole church was destroyed. Boom! The demons. They came in with the vision, and it seems like they're always using lust against uh, the pastor and the elders, and they're doing these kinds of things, and the demons are destroying them. And the Christians uh, don't stand together, so there's kind of this destruction. Now, at an individual level, the devil loves to come in and put in false thoughts, right? It's your words that, that condemn you, right? Because it comes from your heart and reveals what, what the heart of a person is, right? But your thoughts, oh, don't, don't disqualify yourself from anything because of a thought. Because you ever see the little cartoon with the little red demon and the little white angel, you know, talking into each ear? This is a, a very good analogy. The devil is trying to put lies into your mind and trying to condemn. Now, there's a spirit that I used to, uh, unfortunately, know. It afflicted me on a regular basis. I'd honestly forgotten about it until recently someone posted a comment, and I immediately recognized this spirit. It's called the spirit of condemnation. Now... The spirit of condemnation came to the scroll in a dream and said, uh, oh, you're like a tree that doesn't bear any fruit, right? Which is bad because Jesus cursed a tree that didn't produce fruit, right? So, oh man, if I received a dream like that, oh boy, I would be concerned, right? I would be seeking Jesus and looking for some counsel, right? Now, one of the first things you need to do when you receive a dream is pray. Is this dream from God or is this dream from the enemy or is it just a dream from my mind or from mind in general, right? Could be my mind, could be the mind of a neighbor. That's happened. I've documented it. So um, you need to know what is the source of this dream. If it's from God, then you need to pray and ask God what is his meaning. Now in this girl's dream, the next thing Jesus said is from uh, John 3.13. I think that's it. And uh, Peter asks Jesus, well, where are you going? And Jesus says, where I go, you cannot follow. See, now that part, that part she received in the dream. Jesus says it to her. So, uh, is that Jesus? Did Jesus come to condemn or did he come to set the captives free, right? Later, there's the great and terrible day of the Lord when Jesus comes and burns the sky and burns the bad people and, some, and it's the terrible day, right? So, but Jesus has come and Jesus is with us now to set the captives free. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. This is the purpose of Jesus. He is the Lamb of God. He purifies us. He is our Redeemer, right? Not our Condemner. That's much later, or sometime later. So, in this dream, uh, now I'm not going to say if the dream is from God or not, because if it is a dream from the Holy Spirit and someone says it's the devil, Jesus really didn't like that when the Pharisees said that he had the spirit of Beelzebub or some kind of a demonic spirit, right? He really didn't like that. And you can look that up and read about that. So I, I, I don't like to point at something. But each person needs to pray and seek God's wisdom in everything, in everything. The interpretation of a dream, uh, to a decision about your career, your life, your relationships. You know, prayer is constant, right? Be in prayer always, right? Uh, be in communion always. Always be seeking God. Always be leaning back on God. When you're praying for someone, while your words are coming out, destroying the works of the enemy, you're also kind of, the way I picture it is that I'm leaning back. I'm leaning back into Jesus, and I'm feeling him, and I'm attentive, and I'm wanting him to speak to me. And that's really one of the big things I'm waiting for, because I know that when that word comes, that, that rhema word comes, I'm going to speak it, and it's going to break something for the enemy, right? The same in your own life. Always seeking that word. Always leaning back. I always feel like, I like, the, it's just a picture I make up. It's not maybe a real thing, but that I'm leaning back into Jesus and his robes are there and I'm laying and leaning against Jesus and he's right with me, you know, so huge and big behind me. And anybody who comes against me, they're going to see, you know, big brother Jesus standing right behind me 
and uh, they're going to run away. So, but here's the other thing about the devil. He likes to use parts of Scripture. So in this dream, she sees the first part of the Scripture. Where I'm going, you cannot follow. But there's a second part, a part B. And he says, but later you will. So if I received that dream, and I really looked it, looked it up in the Scripture, and I prayed about it, in the end, I would not have any condemnation. I would understand, yes, Jesus wants me to go out and work in the harvest. Yes, Jesus wants me to go out and increase the kingdom. Jesus wants me to go out and preach the gospel. He wants me to feed the sheep to show my love as a way to increase my love and to let it flow freely through me as a wellspring of water. He wants that for you too. And I think that that's what this girl was receiving in her dream, that she's being told, you're not bringing in the harvest now. Actually, I just feel by the Holy Spirit that's not quite wrong. But, but the general idea is that she should go and harvest, and that's going to happen at some point. You can't follow me now, but later you're going to come. But later you're going to come. And, th and this scripture, Jesus is telling Peter, I'm going to heaven. You can't go there now, but later you'll be in heaven. And that's what this message is from Jesus. He's saying, hey, you know, whatever your particulars are, you can't come with me now, but later you're going to come. So you're going to be on the earth for a while, and you have some work to do. And, you, you know, you really have to look at every word that Jesus will use, right? So if he's saying, you know, you're not a baron, he's saying, he's, if he, Jesus is saying, which I, seems unusual for me. Like, I, I haven't had Jesus come to me and really condemn me. I, I can't think of one off the top of my head, right? But Jesus will challenge me. He will challenge me. He'll show me a picture of what I'm doing and ask me to make a judgment on it. And if I'm stupid, I will, right? Now I've learned, like, let God judge and let God be merciful, you know? So uh, I don't think this dream was condemnatory. I think that uh, if, if, you have to pray yourself, if it's a dream from God, then he's saying, Hey, look, look at your fruit. What are you really bearing? What are you doing for the kingdom? And you're coming to heaven one day. So for, for me, I like to think like, well, when I get to heaven, what stories will I have to tell? You know, uh, you know, how bright will be my light? You know, will I receive the crown? Of course, that's most important. But, you know, we also want to do the works. We want to do the good works. We want to encourage one another. We want to have good fellowship. And I want to enjoy life, you know, I want to have fun, I want to love my wife, I want to spend time with my friends, you know, I want to enjoy my work, same as everybody else, and I like to think that I'm able to do those things because of the blessing of God that flows in my life. This is the man from Modesto, reminding you as always to pray or be defeated, and the devil is a liar, and be careful about what he says, be careful of this spirit of condemnation, because even if you receive a true message from God, the spirit of condemnations, I know this from personal experience, twists it, twists it so that you get a bad interpretation. Interpretation belongs to God. You always have to rely on the Holy Spirit, our teacher, to give you the meaning. The devil's a liar. Watch out for him and always trust in God and always seek God's voice in our lives, the Holy Spirit. Pray or be defeated.